This week, I'm gonna show you why a variable ND filter isn't great for photography. I've got many different types of filters, from circular filters that screw onto the front of the lens to the square ones that fit inside a special bracket. However, when I first looked into it, I thought that a variable ND would be a great all-in-one solution. Soon after buying it, I did regret making this decision. So I wanna pass on this information so you don't make the same mistake. An ND filter is basically sunglasses for your camera. It drops the amount of light that reaches the sensor. It can change a photo like this into this, and like this into this. There are many different types, and after years of spending my hard-earned cash, I have quite a few different filters. Normal ND filters are just darkened bits of glass. These lower the light getting into your camera, and you can have everything from a one-stop filter right through to a 10-stop and beyond. Variable ND filters are very different. They have two bits of glass, and the outer bit of glass rotates. As you rotate this outer ring, the amount of light getting into your camera drops. It's basically made up of two bits of polarized glass. As you rotate them, the angle at which the wavelengths are allowed to get through is reduced, hence reducing the amount of light that gets through. Now this is all well and good, and they work really well, but as you get to the darker end, you'll start to get this weird X pattern. The wider your lens, the more accentuated this pattern becomes, and it renders your image useless. Also, this pattern doesn't seem to lessen when you buy the more expensive variable ND filters. It happens across the board from the cheapest variable ND right through to the most expensive. I have a Tiffin variable ND filter. When I put it on the camera and set it to minimum, it drops the light by one stop. If I rotate it, I can get away with around about five stops of light. So it'll drop the amount of light by about six stops compared to when the filter is not on the camera. If you look closely, you can see there's a hint of this X pattern coming through, but it is usable when you drop it by five stops. Anything over this, the X pattern really becomes accentuated and really stands out. So with a variable ND, you can drop it to about six stops, but it's nowhere near a 10 stop ND filter. In theory, you could have this to replace, say, a three stop and a six stop, or a two stop and a five stop, but considering it's two bits of glass and it's quite a bulky unit, you may as well buy two separate filters. The light will only have to pass through one pane of glass, so in theory, the image should be better. At the moment, I use circular ND filters, but I am in the process of buying square filters. I recently bought the Cockin Z series bracket and a few soft grad filters. These are cheaper than the Lee filters, but they do give a slight color cast but nothing too bad that you can't recover in the editing process. Now, variable filters do have their uses, but they're more suited to videography than photography. When I'm filming in harsh sunlight and I wanna drop down the depth of field, I need to let less light into the camera, but open up the aperture more. And this is where a variable ND filter comes into play with videography. They are really handy in this instance, but you've really got to watch that you don't turn them too far and start to get that X pattern again. And that's about it. Filters are expensive, but they're a worthwhile investment and they'll take your photography to the next level. Just don't make the mistake that I made in buying a variable ND filter for photography. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography and videography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.